Welcome back, Tinkercad Tinkers. Today's gonna be my favorite lesson. We're gonna cover circular patterns and linear patterns. I also wanna remind you that I've created this really helpful resource. It's called promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad, where you will be able to find all of the latest and greatest newly updated tutorials on Tinkercad, and you will see all the keyboard shortcuts there, and we're gonna have some other helpful information there as well. I also want to remind you that I created this Tinkercad competency assessment exercises where you can go ahead and put to the test what you have learned in these videos. So if you're an educator and you're appreciating this and you're teaching your classroom with it, please do consider leaving a donation. And if you're a student, I hope you're learning a lot. So let's jump right into it and cover linear and circular patterns as well as slicing. So let's drag out a cone, position it anywhere, and I'll remind you how to create a linear pattern using duplicate. So if you duplicate an object, you can achieve it by control D or simply clicking on this icon here. Then we can shift drag it out. And when we shift click and drag it out, we can actually specify exactly how far away we would desire it to be. So let's say 30. Now it's very important when you create a linear pattern to not click away from the object that you dragged out, otherwise it won't work. So if we click duplicate, we'll see that a linear pattern occurs because Tinkercad remembered how we repositioned the original duplicated item. So to show you what I mean by it won't work if we click away, if I duplicate this and then I drag it out and then I click away and then I click on it, and try to duplicate it, it doesn't recall the movement. And you see it just keeps duplicating this. So that's why it's very important to not click away. Now let me show you some really cool things that you could do with this. You can actually duplicate an object and reposition it any which way you desire. So you can shift it over here. We can even move it up a bit. And then we can flip it. We can achieve that by clicking the shortcut key M and then choosing the desired axis we would like to flip it on. So what happens if we duplicate this item here? What's going to happen is it's going to start creating a linear pattern this way because it's taking into account how it shifted and how it rotated. So let's check it out and you can visually see what I mean. Pretty cool, right? You can also create patterns going directly up. So for instance, if we were to duplicate this item, shift drag it out, and then move it up just a bit so that they're still touching. If we go ahead and duplicate it, it will actually start creating it in the Z axis as well. So going up, which means you can create some really, really cool, intricate designs. Uh, for instance, this could be on the tail of, a, of an alligator and it will represent the spikes that alligators tend to have on their tails. So let's now cover circular patterns and see how we can apply this duplicate and some of the concepts we just learned to circular patterns. So let's unhide what we had hidden. And this is basically, I just very quickly replicated what a clock would look like without the numerical values. Now what I'm going to do for the purpose of this exercise is I would like to take a sphere and I would like to place this sphere in every designated spot that you would have a numerical value. So we're going to have 12 spheres equally spaced out and let's see how we can achieve this. There's a few ways. So let's first do this. Let's resize this sphere to make it a little bit smaller. So maybe 12 by 12 would be more of an ideal look. And we need to change the height as well to 12. So we have a sphere here and let's click on the top view. So we, what we can then do is duplicate this sphere and shift drag it to the position where the nine on the clock would usually be. So if this was a clock, we would go 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So right now we have the three and the nine. Now what we can do is we can group these objects together by shift clicking and selecting on both spheres and clicking group. Now that they're grouped, what we can do is we can align it. So first let's make sure that this 
and the circle that it's directly in the center of the circle. So if we click on these two spheres, and we only need to click once because they are grouped together, and then we shift click on the outside of the clock, we now have the option to align it. As you can see, whenever you do operations, Tinkercad will tell you what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do by showing you the icons as black versus gray. We can't unhide it because these aren't hidden. So that's why this option is not available. Okay, so let's go and align these. And if we recall correctly, we have to align them in the center and in the center. And now these spheres are perfectly aligned. There's equal space here and equal space here. So now that we've done that, we can click away knowing that they're perfectly aligned. And now we're going to simply click on it. We're going to duplicate it. We now want to rotate them so that they're in the position where the number 4 and the number 10 would be. And how do we achieve this? We have 12 numbers, so we need to divide 360 by 12 because the circle is 360 degrees, 12 numbers, and that gives us 30. So we want to rotate this 30 degrees and hopefully we will get it in the position that we desire. Let's see if we're correct. So duplicate. And then when we click on the rotate, we can actually tell it exactly how much we want it to rotate. So let's type in 30 and see what happens. Now, if I'm correct, this is now positioned where the 4 and the 10 would normally be on a clock. Now, we don't have to repeat this. All we have to do is now click duplicate again, and it will now duplicate it. So it will be in the 11 o'clock and the 5 o'clock position. Duplicate again, we get 12 and 6. Duplicate again, we get 1 and 7. Duplicate again, we get 2 and 8. And now we have a perfectly built out clock. Now let's say we didn't know exactly the spacing and the degrees and it wasn't as important to us because we weren't working with something as precise as a clock. Well, we can handle it a slightly different way. So let's select this and let's now hide these objects. So let's group them. So it's one clock and let's press Control H to hide it. Okay, and now you see this is uh, now black light bulb because we can technically unhide it. Let's hide it again, Control H. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a circular pattern in a slightly different way. So let's take this box and let's resize it for the purpose of what I'm about to show you to let's say two. And with these, we're gonna stretch it out by, let's make it two times its height. So let's do something like this. So if I wanted to create a perfect circle out of this, there's a different way I can achieve it by duplicating it and simply moving it and then rotating it and positioning it so it's relatively touching. So, okay, now that we've done that, if we click duplicate and we keep doing it, it will go all the way around and create a nice looking circle. Now, this is nice, especially because now we can group it and we can go ahead and resize it to get the circle as big or as small as we want. Now again, this is just working on one plane. I'm gonna show you something that I think you'll find pretty cool. We're gonna create a circular staircase. So if we get rid of that last one here and we click here and duplicate it, what we can actually do is raise it up and then we can move it over and then we can rotate it so we can align it so it starts to shift so theoretically if we now duplicate it it will start creating a staircase going up let's see if we're correct again you can duplicate control D or just keep clicking duplicate and we were correct if we keep doing it we are building a stairway to heaven you can call it and the nice thing is, and we'll see if I'm correct, this should still be a circle. So if we look at it from the top view, you can see that it's pretty much a circle. Why this is sticking out is because we're looking at it in perspective view. And if we switch to orthographic, you'll see that it's a perfect circle. And if you don't recall the difference between perspective and orthographic, watch part one of this tutorial series and it will surely refresh your memory. 
And this is how you achieve a circular pattern and the many things that you could do with it. Okay, so now that we've discussed uh, linear patterns and circular patterns, I want to take a second to discuss slicing. And I'll explain why we need to do this in a second. So let's say we have this in our design, but for some reason, this is very tall and our 3D printer can't handle such a tall object or a wide object or a long object. And so we want to split it into two pieces and then 3D print them. Now, if you know anything about 3D printing, it's always helpful to have a flat section so that you can build off of that section. So what we're going to do is we're going to effectively cut this in half and then position it so that both pieces are on the work plane. And what this would do theoretically is after you print it, you can technically glue them together. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So first thing we need to do is drag out our ruler tool and see exactly how tall this Astrobot is. We can see here that he's 85.48 millimeters tall. We can change this to 90 to make our lives a little bit easier. So if we change it to 90 and we're going to drag out this cylinder that is a hole. So it already cuts a hole. You can also achieve it by dragging a regular cylinder. So for instance, drag a regular cylinder and turn that cylinder into a hole. But Tinkercad has a few shortcuts for us and it already has a few objects that are holes. So what we do here, since we know this is 90, let's say we want to split it in half. We would simply change the height of this cylinder to 45. And then we would we want to encompass this Astrobot in the cylinder. So we want to ensure that the cylinder is big enough. So we will change these dimensions to 100 by 100. And we'll move it over so it's relatively in the center. We want to make sure it's encompassing it. It is. So now that we've done that, we want to create an identical hole shape, but we want to now create it so that it's on top of this. So we basically want to stack this hole shape and have two of them perfectly covering the Astrobot. How do we achieve it? Well, we can also use duplicate. And when we go to our new object, we can actually move it up. And you'll see, if you recall from one of the videos, the green designator ruler measures how far away the object is from the work plane. So we can change this to 45 because we know that this is 45 inches tall. It's half of 90, which is the Astrobot. And now we've perfectly covered the Astrobot in whole shaped cylinder. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and duplicate this once more. So if we click on it, duplicate it, and then we want to shift drag it so it's side by side. Sometimes it's easier to use the keypad. So if you have the up, down, left, right arrow key on your keyboard, sometimes it's easier when you're trying to shift click. So now that we have this, we see that they're side by side. All we're going to do is we're going to delete the top cylinder on one of them. So we'll grab this top cylinder, we'll delete it. And we're going to delete the bottom cylinder on the other one. And now we simply group together. So we group this Astrobot together with the hole. And it will perfectly cut it in half. And we group this Astrobot with the hole shape. And it will also perfectly cut it in half. Once we've achieved that, if you recall, there's a keyboard shortcut D. If you select any item that's above the work plane, if you click D, it brings it right back down to the work plane. So it's perfectly aligned with the work plane. So this shape, we can go ahead and print. However, this, we want to rotate. So if we click and then we go to rotate, we can rotate it exactly 180 degrees and we'll see that it's also aligned to the work plane. If we're not sure, we can raise it above, click on it, D, and it's perfectly aligned to the work plane. Why this is helpful is because if this object was too tall to 3D print, you can now 3D print it like this. When it comes out, you can simply flip it, glue it together, no one will know the difference. And because it's perfectly flat, it'll be very, very easy to glue them together. And this is how you slice objects in Tinkercad. 
So I hope you learned a lot in this part five of the Tinkercad tutorial series. In the next video, we're gonna cover importing, exporting, and sending to. This is very, very important things that you need to understand in Tinkercad, in CAD in general. It's gonna help you along your 3D printing journey. If you're curious on what I have done with my 3D printing skill set, you can always navigate over to promoambitions.com forward slash 3D dash printing and you can also just navigate to my website, promoambitions.com, click on the drop down menu for services and select 3D printing. And there you will see how I utilize state of the art 3D printing technology to bring comfort and care to pediatric patients. I have started a benefit corporations many years back. It's called Heal 3D where I 3D printed for pediatric departments. And afterwards, I started teaching at a lot of gifted school programs. I started teaching for a lot of libraries. I do workshops and presentations in a lot of places across New Jersey and New York City. And that's the beautiful thing of continuing the learning journey and going on with your skill set is you're able to do a lot with it. And sometimes you're able to pad your bank account with it as well. I also want to remind you that all of these Tinkercad tutorial series videos, you'll be able to find at promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad. And if you're an educator, make sure to go to promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad dash exercises. And there will be Tinkercad competency assessment exercises for you and your students to use. Now, currently I use Fusion 360, which is an advanced form of Autodesk's CAD software, but it's what the engineers and architects use. And that's the beautiful thing about sticking to a subject and trying to master it is that you can go and become even more advanced in it. Now, I can understand and hold conversations with engineers and architects, but I am by no means on their level. I'm continuing my educational journey every single day. I try to continue on with a different type of CAD program or learn something new in Fusion 360, which by the way, I might start making tutorials on Fusion 360. If that's something you wish for me to do, please mention it in the comment section. And now, as I mentioned, I am going to go and upload this video and then I will create the sixth video of this tutorial series and we're gonna round it out and I'm gonna make it on importing, exporting, and sending to. And by the way, just in case I didn't mention enough, you can find all of these Tinkercad tutorial series on promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.